Hi guys, it's Alonzo from alonzosblog.com. I was 16 years in Scientology, 15 years in anti-Scientology, and I've been eight years out of both. So uh, once again, shout out to Rabbit and M MX2 Mumma, who uh, was able to get Rabbit, Victoria Britain's website, and uh, Rabbit is now looking into that. <laughs> and so the word is continuing to get out about Kyle Brennan after having been buried for so many years. Just remember, there's no statute of limitations on murder. Okay, so the first segment here that I wanna talk about, there will be three segments, how to identify an OSA agent. The second segment is where's Matteo Rossetti? And the third segment is Scientology rig search results for Kyle Brennan Scientology. So this should be a good one. Continue listening till the end, y'all. You will be rewarded. So the first section here, how to identify an OSA agent. I wrote a post here putting out pretty much everything that I've learned over the past 25 years about identifying OSA agents. You have to understand this idea of who's an OSA agent, who's not an OSA agent, has been around in Scientology versus anti-Scientology for as long as I have. It's part of the culture, it's embedded. It's used both to protect critics among themselves from being subjected to OSA or to giving, giving up information that OSA needs. And it's also used by OSA itself to discredit other critics by telling all the other critics that this guy's an OSA agent, don't listen to him. So it's important to know how to actually identify an OSA agent. One of the things that you should know is that uh, undercover work, like let's say you've got a guy who is working undercover for the Drug Enforcement Agency, the DEA, and he's acting as if he is a drug dealer so that he can get inside their network and report back to the DEA everything that is going on. Well, that fake drug dealer is going to do every single thing that a drug dealer does. He's gonna deal drugs, real drugs, He's going to do drugs and he's going to show that he's doing drugs with all the other drug dealers. And he's going to beat up people and make sure they all see that. And he's even going to kill people and make sure that everybody sees that too. That will embed him and show all the other drug dealers that he is trustworthy. He's not a DEA agent. So he's going to do everything a drug dealer does, right? Same with an OSA agent. He's going to do everything a critic or a protester is going to do against Scientology. And he's going to do it in a way that makes him beyond question as a protester or as a Scientology critic. So then how do you find out who's an OSA agent and who's not an OSA agent? Well, there was a guy, a hero of mine named Mike McClary, who was a Scientology spy who came in from the cold, and he did a series of videos in the early 2000s, which let everybody know exactly how OSA agents are trained. And in this one video called the Protect Button, which the link will be in the show notes, he goes through how it is that they decide what to go after in a critic in order to fair game them, to shutter them into silence, or to ruin them utterly. And that is called the protect button. What are they protecting? Are they protecting their job? Do they happen to have, and this is a real life example, do they have custody of a child? Let's say they're divorced and their husband is in Scientology. They're out of Scientology. They're a well-known critic and they have custody of their daughter. And OSA knows that they don't want to give up custody of their daughter. And so they threaten that custody of their daughter or they threaten their job. They threaten whatever the target is protecting in order to coerce them into either doing what they want for them or shutting up and going away. So that's the protect button. Now this this is very useful. This is how you identify an OSA agent. It's, it's still difficult, but this is the route to take in your analysis. You just turn the protect button around on Scientology. What is Scientology trying to protect? By my lights, Scientology is mostly trying to protect three things. They're trying to protect their tax exempt status. They're trying to protect their global real estate mm -hmm. empire worth billions of dollars. And they're also trying to protect 
themselves against criminal indictments that would ruin everything. And this would be criminal indictments of all present and past senior Scientology officials. So those are Scientology's three protect buttons. How can you tell if somebody's an OSA agent or not? Well, they're going to be doing everything but helping to threaten these three protect buttons. For instance, they're never going to mention anything that might produce a criminal indictment on any present or past senior Scientology officials. If they've buried the Kyle Brennan story for over a decade, they're not going to try to get everybody to remember Kyle Brennan. Dave's not going to pay for that. Dave will pay you to bury Kyle Brennan, but he's never going to pay to have people remember Kyle Brennan. Because remember, the statute of limitations on murder, there is no such thing. Second, they're not going to do anything that's going to actually threaten or give the intelligence necessary to threaten their global real estate empire. They're not going to give details like, where is that money going? Is that money going to buy Thomas Kincaid paintings? Is that money going to buy uh, retirements for all the in-base escapees? As long as they keep their exchange in and control the conversation on Scientology, are they going to give any of that information? No, they're not. They're going to appear to, mm -hmm. but in the end, they're not. They're going to end up not giving any actionable in information that will actually threaten anyone's global real estate empire. And then the tax exempt status. They're going to appear to talk about the tax exempt status. Remember, Scientology in the aftermath did an episode on Scientology's tax exempt status, which was the most weak sauce thing ever. At the end of that episode, you had no idea if there was any way to do anything about Scientology's tax exempt status. And during that episode, no one ever mentioned that Mike Rinder was the chief architect of Scientology's tax exemption. An architect knows how to bring down a building that he has designed. So no details that could be used or strategies that could be used to get the government to review Scientology's tax exemption was mentioned in that episode. Now, am I 100% certain that Mike Rinder is an OSA agent? Absolutely not. There are many other possibilities about Mike Rinder, which I've written about extensively. And I identified eight different things about why Mike Rinder has never revealed a, a crime. So I always juggle multiple hypotheses. I never try to have a pet hypothesis. So this is the route towards identifying whether someone is an OSA agent or not. And you, you have to have a lot of experience. You have to you have to know, you know, a lot of details about stuff to really find who the suspicious people are in the anti-Scientology community who are buried as, you know, the pillars of the community. But in fact, they're trying to distract you from everything that Scientology is trying to protect. So, you know, in the last video, I, I made some jokes about my my Amazon wish list. And I said, can you imagine the kind of damage I could do if people would donate enough for me to get two aircraft carriers? I mean, really, think about it. Alonzo with his own aircraft carriers. Okay. So that's the top of my Amazon wish list. But the second point of my Amazon wish list is hiring a private investigator. Now, what would I use that money for to hire a private investigator with? I would use him to find Matteo Rossetti. Who is Matteo Rossetti? Well, Matteo Rossetti is the ethics officer who interviewed Tom Brennan, Kyle Brennan's father, in the weeks after Kyle Brennan's body was found with a gunshot wound to his head in his apartment. Matteo Rossetti did extensive interviews with Tom Brennan. He wrote reports that went up through Debbie Cook and up into Mike Render, and of course to David Miscavige, because Tom Brennan was working for his twin sister, Denise Miscavige. So Matteo Rossetti was the ethics officer that basically got all the information out of Tom Brennan about what occurred that night. And then Matteo Rossetti went missing, and he's still missing to this day. There is a bunch of information here in this blog post about where's Matteo. And Victoria Britain's website has nothing but hard evidence on the death of her son. Please go there and read it. The third uh, segment here is about an ongoing struggle that 
Victoria Britton is having about getting the word out about her son's death. This is a snapshot I took a couple months ago on search results on Kyle Brennan Scientology. You know, you go to Google and you type in those three words. And the first thing that you see is this courthouse news service article. Mom blames Scientologist chaplain for boy's death. Okay, you got to understand that is a Scientology created article. And they, for 17 years, 16 years, however long, they've kept it up here as the first search result when people type in Kyle Brennan Scientology. Then you've got this Tampa Bay Times article that's also appearing at the top of search results, written by Scientology's boy, Tom Tobin, at the Tampa Bay Times. Ask Serge Delmar about Tom Tobin, okay? He'll let you know all about him. And then you've got the, the hit in Google search results, which is all about Kyle Brennan Scientology, which is Victoria Britton's blog. And so I have here in this blog post the evidence on the death of Kyle Brennan, which proves it could not have been a self unalignment. And then I, I briefly talked to Victoria, and she told me about the content of the court news article. And here's what she told me. She said, I've been trying to get that article removed. When it was first published, I contacted the writer and challenged the article's content. He told me that Scientology lawyers paid him to write it. At some point, the journalist that Victoria talked to removed his name, blocked her, and had the piece attributed to courthouse news staff. I've also attempted to remove the work written by Tom Tobin, who has never spoken to me and did not attend the appeal hearing that he's supposedly reporting on. I will have more time in the coming months to do whatever I can to get them removed. So don't be fooled by these top search results. They do not present the reality of what happened to Kyle Brennan. Victoria does. She's not like me, okay? I'm this hot-headed dude, whereas Victoria Britton is not. Even though it's her own son, she sticks to evidence and she reports the evidence only. She lets others decide what they believe. She doesn't tell anybody what to believe. So I want to let you know that this is what's going on regarding the death of Kyle Brennan. Scientology is on top of this, trying to make sure that you never find out the truth about how Kyle Brennan died. Okay, so I want to thank everybody. Keep sharing we need to create a groundswell of pressure to get the Clearwater PD, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to act, to actually finally get justice for Kyle. All right? Thank you very much, and thank you for all of your support. Over and out.